Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at this amazing mini server. It's all you're going to need, and it's from a Zimmerboard. Now, this is useful if you want to run, say, Open Media Vault or PFSense or Open WRT or Unraid or any of that stuff. Plex servers, you can do all that on this little mini server. It comes well contained in its own little unit here. Inside the box, you're going to get your power adapter with plug and also you're going to get your user manual and setup guide it's very simple and easy to do i'll show you how to do it but it's all in english language and uh, pictures so you can easily understand but this has been designed for creators where you just get it out of the box plug in some ethernet and power and basically locate it on your local network and you're good to go it comes with casa os already pre-installed but you can install windows 11 on here you can install other flavors of os if you want to but inside there you're going to get a couple of stickers and also you're going to get the main unit itself this is it right here called zimmerboard here and you can see this one has got a nice aluminium cooler on top of it and underneath there we have that perspex with the actual board inside there the single board computer here on this one we do have two sata ports and one sata power port on here on this side here we have a PCI Express 2.0 slot on this side, so you can connect up whatever you like there. And uh, on this side, we have a blank side, and we have two gigabit Ethernet ports, one small mini display port here, two USB 3.0 ports, and our power input port here. Now, you can obviously connect a load of different stuff to this, i.e. USB devices, uh, hubs, you can connect a uh, PCI Express 2.0 compatible devices on here. You've got plenty of options available for this little mini uh, server. So it is pretty small and lightweight, but um, if you're looking for something that's self-contained and you don't have to do a lot of work, it does come pre-installed with Casa OS on here, which makes it super easy to get up and running very quickly. Now, of course, you can use this for a lot of things like Plex Media Server, PFSense, and OpenWRT, and loads of other stuff, which we'll take a look at in a sec. But before we get too deep into it, I just want to have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 Pro or a cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key, check out the links in the video description, create an account, and then click on those links, and it will take you straight to this page. You will then be able to click the buy now button and use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply this to your order and get 30% discount. They will then send you the key and you can activate it inside Windows. Anyway, back to the video. So the compare Zimmerboard models, this one is the Zimmerboard 832. This does come with the processor N3450 4 cores, 1.1 gigahertz with a 2.2 gigahertz boost. 2 megabytes of L2 cache. I'd like to see a bit more there, but that's what they're offering. Also, we do have memory, 8 gigabytes on this model, 4 and 2 on other models. Internal storage is 32 gigabytes on this one, but they do a 16 gigabyte version as well. TDP on this is only 6 watts, which is pretty insane, but it's a pretty decent uh, mini server. Now, as I've already mentioned, it comes straight out the box with the operating system pre-installed, which is Casa OS which is based on Debian, but you can install other compatible OSs on this, which is Linux, uh, Windows, OpenWRT, PFSense, and also Android and Libra ELEC. So we can do that as well. And uh, you've also got some other options like uh, adding some add-ons to this. If you want to purchase more things, you can do. You can see here SATA Y cables here. Also, you've got the PCI Express to NVMe SSD adapter and Wi-Fi antennas on here. There's loads of options available which you can add to this if you wish. This is the version I have here, Zimmerboard 832. And again, uh, it's about $199, which is pretty good for something like this. Put your Ethernet cable in, put a bit of power to it, and then basically go to your local network and type in there HTTP uh, colon forward slash forward slash and then uh, CASA OS. Uh, dot local and then push enter and you'll get this uh, create an account here you can put in whatever you like here and then once you've done this you'll be offered the casa os uh, desktop there and i'll show you that in a second so let's go ahead and create this and it should now do this for us and here we are at the desktop here you can see we get the time and date and everything up the top left hand side here 
you've got your CPU here and your CPU usage for your performance, and then you've got your RAM usage right here. We don't have much installed on here, so you can go ahead and uh, check your storage here, which is your internal storage. You can add more external storage on here if you wish. You can even connect to an external source like, uh, say, Google Drive or even OneDrive or something like that. You can even connect to your NAS, your local NAS on your network. Inside the App Store, you can see here we do have a bunch of options available like Nextcloud, Pi-hole, and you've also got Plex. You've got Jellyfin. You've got Qubit Torrent here. You also have a Vault Warden on here, MB. If you want to set that up, you've got quite a few options available straight out the box. You just click on these and install them and they will work on your network, which is super easy for people that are not familiar on how to set all this up manually and doing it yourself. You can do that on this device if you wish. And again, if you like to use these sort of apps, you can do. You've got Home Assistant on here as well. Uh, and there's going to be more added to this later on down the line. So you've got quite a few options available straight out the box, which you can just click on and install and get set up very, very quickly. Now, just like any other device, you can just click on what you want to do here and it will give you more information about it. So for instance, if I wanted to click on, say for instance, Jellyfin, you would click on here or you can just click straight on the install if you want to. If you want to read a bit about it, you can do here and it will show you basically what this is. Click on install and this will go ahead and install this onto your little Zimmer board. So pretty awesome. If there's something here you don't like and you want to set up a custom install, you can do by clicking on the custom install and you can set up the Docker image, the app name, the icon URL, the web user interface, the network, and you can set up the ports and everything on here that you want. This is a little bit more advanced, uh, but if you want to go down and do this, you can do. You can set the uh, CPU uh, shares privileges here by low, medium, and high, and a bunch of other settings in here. That's a video for another day, uh, but you can do that and does give you an option to manually do it yourself if you want to. So that is the custom apps and also the apps that are pre-installed here. On the top, we've got our settings here. Not much in here. You can see here show uh, search bar and we also have search engine, which is uh, set to DuckDuckGo. You can set that to whatever you like, change your language. And also there's a bunch of other settings like change your wallpaper, show recommended apps and so on. You can check your updates here. There is an update, so I'll quickly do that. It's always good to keep your system updated. So go through here because they're probably doing bug fixes and also adding more stuff all the time. So click on the update whenever you get a chance, if there is one to do. So let's take a look at the files here. When you click on the uh, file browser here, you can click on this one and open this up. And this will take you to this location where you have access to the root data here. And this is for your internal storage as well and you've got your documents downloads gallery and media here you don't get vast amounts of storage on this device on this model you get 32 gigabytes which isn't a lot so if you want to add more storage you can do but you can't upgrade this device uh, via taking out the board and upgrading it by adding more memory and things like that it's not that sort of device but if you want to add externally you can do uh, by adding more storage that way now, of course, if you've got loads of media and stuff like that, you're going to want to use some sort of external storage like your NAS, or you're going to want to use something like a USB storage device and connect it that way. And then you'll be able to access all that from inside here. You can manage your storage here. So if I had some uh, storage plugged in here, it will be detected here and you can then uh, manage it. Now, also on here, you'll see this folders called Media Gallery uh, Downloads and Documents and things like that. This is your internal storage, which you can drop some stuff into. But with 32 gigabytes of storage, you're not going to be uh, putting in there loads and loads of data. Let's go to the location again here. You can connect to Dropbox and you can also connect to Google Drive. And that can be your external uh, storage uh, source. And you can also connect to the network storage, which will be your NAS drive, if you wanted to put in your address here for your NAS, you can then gain access to all of your external storage via the network on your NAS, which is very, very useful. If you've got all your Plex uh, server set up on this little device and you have all your movies set up all on your uh, storage device, which is your NAS, you'll be able to then set it up this way, which is very useful. Or you can set it up to gain access to your documents and things like that. So let's go back again and go back into the main uh, desktop here of our operating system. You've got the widget section here. There's not much in here. Time, 
uh, system status and storage status and network status here. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple device to get used to if you're a novice or you're not that familiar with these types of devices. It is really useful for having these containers set up for you. you just click on the install and it will just install that there. Whereas uh, if you're going to be more advanced, you can even use terminal if you wanted to in here. If you wanted to get down and do it this way and using uh, commands, you can do uh, if that's a much more in-depth way of going about things but they've tried to make it a little bit more easier for people to get it out the box put some ethernet on it put some power to it and then get it onto their local network and then access it and install applications it can't be any easier than that so what do i think the pros and cons i would say the unit's a good price good build quality uh, silent operation low power draw also easy to use and easy to set up and software is included the cons are the CPU is getting a bit old now, but it was made in 2016. It has very little internal storage. Also, you can't update the internal storage and you can't update the internal memory on this little device. But at that price, it's a pretty good deal. Anyway, for me, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall leave all the links in the video description if you're interested. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.